Coming up on JNN, we take a look at last Sunday's marathon, Anaisa Medina updates us on the spring sports season, and we check out Drama's final production. We also take a look at one student's hobby, Tabari Devon brings us crowdsourcing, and Julia Lobo tells us what's trending for spring break. All this and more on today's JNN. Good morning, Gregory. Hi, I'm Lisa Miranda. And I'm Nate Cato. Today is Thursday, April 2nd. Today is the last day before spring break. So, so let's, let's get started. started. Last Sunday was a 2015 Minnesota Marathon. Over 3,000 runners crossed the finish line, including 32 runners from Gregory, all part of the Teens Run Modesto program. Stephanie Romero and Tommy Tran filed this report. The Teens Run Modesto program trains students to complete a full marathon pushing teens to run 26.2 miles within 26 weeks of training, giving students the opportunity to cross the finish line, no matter their athletic ability. I started Teens Run Bresto in late September because um, it is something that I found out only 1% of high schoolers do in their life. So just the unexpectedness. Um, people up until this day were telling me I was crazy and I love that. Before Teens Run Modesto, I could barely run two and a half miles. We practiced since September 28th, I believe, and so I probably ran about 515, 520 miles since then. So we train three times a week during the week, and then we meet up on Saturday with all the schools, and basically a lot of them, um, it's their first time uh, running a marathon, so they don't know what to expect, or they don't know, you know, how to be guided, and that's what we're there from. What keeps the students motivated to run is the support provided by their volunteer mentors. My favorite thing was actually the mentors because we didn't, I didn't think, I thought it was just going to be a, a by myself thing, but the mentors really helped me out. As a mentor, I support the kids in their training runs. We try to be really positive with the kids and encouraging and to be their friend and support them because running isn't easy. The program provides more than the opportunity to run, but the opportunity to grow. I think mainly it just provides the confidence, um, especially because a lot of the teens, they sometimes feel self-conscious um, and they're intimidated to even try out to other sports. And this sport, like I said, you don't need to be, I mean, anybody can join, anybody can, can try. Teens Are Modesto allows you to mature, actually. Um, you, you grow up and you become adults because you're ready and you can accomplish something that few people can. With this program, if you put in the time, you will cross the finish line and that in itself, that's 26.2 miles. Not everybody can say that they've done that. It's extremely hard and even on mile 25, I was like, why am I doing this? But the feeling of sprinting the last point two and hearing all the crowd cheering and getting your medal is just the greatest feeling ever. This has been Stephanie Romero and Tommy Tran reporting for JNN. Thanks Stephanie and Tommy. Congratulations to all of our runners. Prom will take place May 9th at the Gallo Center. Tickets are on sale today for $35. Prices will raise after break. Also, prom fair is at lunch, where the theme of this year's event will be revealed. There will be a formal wear fashion show and various vendors including Sober Grad, who is selling a prom package. Purchase a $5 raffle ticket to enter to win a prom package valued at $225. Gregory Floral has a variety of balloons and flowers for sale daily in M103. Also, be sure to make boutonniere and corsage orders for prom after spring break. The spring sports season is now in full swing. With all eight sports now competing in league play, Anaisa Medina comes to us from the JNN Spring Sports Box. What's up, Jags? I'm Anaisa Medina, bringing you the latest on Gregory's Spring Varsity Athletics. Let's get straight to it. As of Wednesday, baseball's league record is 1-1. One one. Byra beat us in the league opener where the Patriots won by 62. 
The Jags found satisfaction on March 27th, where Bayer met us at home. Bayer scored the first run to start the game, but the Jags answered with five runs in the first inning. They maintained their momentum for the rest of the game, finishing with a victory of 12-4. The boys' golf team remains undefeated. They face Modesto High on March 31st, where they finish with a one-point win over the Panthers. Final score, 207-208. to 208. Softball currently has three wins and one loss. The Lady Jacks faced Johansson at home on Tuesday, where they dominated throughout four innings. The game ended early with a score of 19-0, with home run contributions from Nikki Alexander and Nicole Stewart. Boys Tennis faced Bayer at home on Tuesday. Despite our top two players losing their match against the Patriots, the Jags still cleared the remaining seven sets against Bayer. Final score for the boys was 7-2. Our girls soccer team is currently at the top of the league with a record of five wins and one tie. The Lady Jags faced Downey on Tuesday where they dominated the first half with a score of 2-0 and finished off the second half with a score of 6-0. The varsity track and field teams have been dominated league meets. Boys and girls track swapped Bayer on Wednesday, March 25th. The ladies finished with a win of 95-34 and the boys finished with a win of 118-18. For a more recent score for the April 1st meet, check out jagnews.net. The swim and dive teams faced Johansson last Friday with the Lady Jags won with a final score of 118 to 63, and the boys won 83 to 82. According to Coach Corgett, it is the first time in history where Gregory has swept Johansson in all four levels. Today, baseball and tennis will face Davis at home. Golf will tee off against Enox at Creekside. Swim and dive will meet Enox at Enox, and softball will go against Enox at home. Check out JagNewsNet for updated scores in upcoming games. That's it for your Jane and Spring Sports Box this week. I'm Anaisa Medina. Back to you, Melissa. Thanks, Anaisa. Listen up, Jags. These next few announcements are about the student body office. Applications for the 2015-2016 leadership class for appointed and non-appointed positions are available in the SBO. Less than 100 yearbooks are left. The cost is $80. Tickets to this year's Sober Grad event are for sale. A DJ and a taco truck will be at the event, and prizes such as a TV and Beats headphones will be awarded. Reminder, checks are no longer allowed in the SBO, only cash or credit. Today is the last day to claim your items from the lost and found before they are thrown away or donated, so please come and claim them. Drama performed Cyrano de Berger Bergerjack last weekend. The show is a modern take on the classic novel Cyrano de Bergerac. Angie Morales and Matthew Martinez gives us the report. Drama performed Cierno de Burgershack last Friday and Saturday. This show is a modern twist on an old classic. Yes, yes. Cyrano de Bergerac takes place in the early like medieval times. It takes place at a theater. Uh, Cyrano is one of the actors and he actually gets into a sword fight with some of the people. So it's the same basic plot where this one takes place at a burger shack, modern day. Uh, and Cyrano is a burger shack worker. And it's the same basic story, just in a more modern version. This performance was different than most other musicals, not only because of the modern pop music, but because it was double casted, which proved to have some difficulties and some advantages. What we did was we would do half and half, where one day it would be one cast doing the first play. That was a challenge because we could only use 50% of the time that we had. It made things a lot easier if one person had trouble with something, then I could help the other person. If there's notes I couldn't hit or Will couldn't hit, we would help each other. And if one of us was gone for any rehearsal, we had someone to step up and not have someone to read for that person. So it was kind of cool almost being like a shadow to another person, especially for the role of Roxanne because I was really happy to be sharing it with Sarah because she's an amazing actress. Some of the challenges were mainly getting lines down because we were kind of basing our lines on each other. And so getting them down without our other cast member was pretty difficult. The story of Cierno de Burgershack focuses on the love story between Cierno and Roxanne. However, the show carries a much stronger message. Most of us let our insecurities and fears get in the way, but the message of the show is to don't let those get in your way and, uh, and pursue what you love. This has been Matthew Martinez, Angie Morales, and Khalil Williams reporting for JNN. Congratulations to Drama on their final 2015 production. Sophomore Liza Perkins has a unique passion, cosplaying. With a growing fan base and strong dedication, 
Perkins shares her story on what exactly she does. Melissa Miranda brings you this story. Sophomore Liza Perkins is a cosplayer. With eight years of sewing, she has an unusual but creative passion in cosplaying. Back, I think, in October of 2013, um, I started watching Toonami, and I saw like Sword Art Online, and I thought it was the coolest thing on earth, and I saw the main character, Asuna, and I was like, I really loved her outfit and just like everything she did, and I was like, oh, for Halloween, I should dress up as her. So I went to go look um, online at her outfit, and I saw the word cosplay, and I'm like, well, what does that mean? So I kind of looked that up, and I saw like all these characters and all these like amazing outfits, and I just kind of like, I wanted to do that, so um, I bought that outfit for like 130, and I think it was that was the first one I ever did, and it was by far my favorite. Cosplay is taking your favorite animated characters to life by wearing their costumes and acting as them. I decided to start making my own. I think. Right before Anime Expo in July, I made my first one. It was just like a simple skirt and top. Perfecting the costumes takes time and hard work. It starts with like you find the character you really want, and I actually um, look up that character and I actually look up their um, on a Wikipedia page about them because their outfits can be really difficult. So I find just a bunch of reference pictures like anywhere in any pose because poses are really important when you're taking pictures. And then you, I just find like random patterns for shirts and stuff that I need. For two years of cosplaying, Perkins has dedicated her free time to making new costumes for expos with multiple wigs and contacts to even cutting her hair shorter for putting wigs on easier. It's been it's. It's quite a chunk of change, not only with the costumes and everything, but the travel, the hotels, the registrations, mm -hmm. all that kind of stuff. Perkins' creativity in her costumes has led to her gaining fans who admire her costumes and personality. I have people like run up to me like, oh my gosh, you're so and so, I love you. I'm like, oh, oh no. <laughs> I just get like all nervous, like I don't know what to say. After a year of cosplaying, Liza has set a goal for the future. I want to continue into college doing it. I actually want to um, get a like degree in like fashion and stuff for design to better help myself with um, making my own patterns and everything. To be this young and to have such a passion for something, that's one of the reasons I encourage it because it's nice to have a kid that has something they feel so strongly about and, you know, sticks with it. This has been Melissa Miranda reporting for JNN. Thanks, Melissa. You've seen him on campus bringing the mic to you and your peers. Don't believe me? Just watch as Tabari Devone puts a funky twist on this episode of Crowdsourcing. What's up, y'all? This is Tabari Devone coming out for Crowdsourcing. Today, we're going to see if you remember the lyrics. Let's do it. This is that ice cold. Michelle, fight for that white gold. This one's for them hood girls, them good girls straight. I don't know. Stop. Okay, masterpiece. Masterpiece. I thought it was a bad word. <laughs> uptown, funk you up. Say uptown, funk you up. Now what? Uptown, funk you up. Uptown, funk you up. Woo! Saturday night, are we in the spot? Don't believe me, just watch. Woo! You feel the do. All right. I don't hear anything. What are you? You're not going to hear the song. Oh. So this is that ice cold. Michelle Pfeiffer for that white gold. <laughs> I don't know the rest. Really? Yeah. Too hot, hot damn. You know who I am. Oh, too hot, hot damn. Make a drag want to retire, man. Too hot, hot damn. This is that ice cold. No, uh-uh. And the shell five. Um, uptown funk you up. Uptown funk you up. Hey, hey, hey. uptown funk you up. <laughs> all right, all right. All right, well, this has been Crowdsourcing. I'm Tabari Devon. We'll see you next time. Thanks, Tabari. If you feel like you have nothing to do over break, this week's trend report with Julia Lobo reveals some local spots that can make your spring break here in the Valley more enjoyable. What's up, Jags? I'm Julia Lobo with the Trend Report. In less than 24 hours, spring break will officially begin. Before your vacation starts, I'll be sharing a few places to go while still staying local. So let's take a look. Castle 
Memorial Park in Ripon is the perfect spot for hiking, floating the river, or for taking a tent out for camping. It's the perfect destination for you and your friends, all while only being 15 minutes away from home and costing you less than $20. Stonehenge Indoor Gym, located in downtown Modesto, is a great place to beat the spring heat. The name of the gym is Stonehenge Indoor Climbing Gym. Uh, we are a climbing gym, we're a climbing facility, that's all we have to offer. It's a great amount of fun and we have a good time. Uh, pricing wise, it depends on if you are a first timer or a returning climber or experienced climber. So if you are a true first timer, it's $23 as a regular adult or $20 as a student all you, or military. You need a student ID or military ID um, to qualify for that. Um, and that includes your class and climbing time. So if you uh, need instruction, we'll get you through that. It takes 20, 30 minutes to get through that, and then off you go in climbing. If you know what you're doing, you can show me you know what you're doing, then you're $15 or $12 as a student. Looking to do something that doesn't require too much planning? Well, going out to eat is always a good option. Freeans is a small restaurant located less than five minutes away from campus offering all organic and natural dishes ranging from sandwiches and salads to pastries and desserts for a quick treat. Mango Crazy on the corner of Floyd Avenue offers unique Mexican desserts that all revolve around mangoes. Their most popular treat, Mango Nada, is a yummy blend of sherbet, mango, and chili powder. Craving a little more adventure? Leaving the city is definitely an option. Amtrak has a train station right here in Modesto. For around $20, you can get a round trip ticket to some of your favorite destinations, including San Francisco and Santa Cruz. And that wraps it up. No matter where your vacation takes you, everyone needs a spring break playlist. Check out mine on JagDoosNet and other ways to have an awesome break. <laughs> well, I'm Julia Lobo, and that's what's trending. Back to you, Nate and Melissa. Well, that's it for today's JNN. School will be back in session April 13th. Have fun and save spring break. I'm Nate Cato. And I'm Lisa Miranda. See, See you, you next time. time.